The Magical Garden of Claude Monet by Lawrence Anholt. The Magical Garden of Claude Monet. When we only see one name here, Lawrence Anholt, what does that mean? Do you remember? It means that Lawrence Anholt wrote and illustrated the book. So he did the pictures and he wrote the words as well. Oh, I wish we had a garden, said Julie, as she looked down at the grey river which ran through the city. Even Louis, the greyhound, was bored of being inside. As soon as I finish this painting, said Julie's mother, I'll take you on a journey to the most wonderful garden in the world. It belongs to my old friend, the painter, Claude Monet. They took a big black train beside the twisting river far out of the city and into the countryside. Then Louis began to run down the hill and into a lane where a huge wall stood around a mysterious garden. Stop, Louis, called Julie, but it was too late. Louis had gone. Julie didn't know what to do, so she got down on her hands and knees and wriggled inside. It was like crawling into a dreamy world where twisting plants grew as tall as trees. Julie ran around a corner and almost knocked over a big man with a spade. The man had a straw hat and a huge white beard. Oh, said Julie, I'm looking for my dog. Are you the gardener? I suppose I am, said the man. Come and look. One day, these tiny seedlings will grow into big flowers, but a gardener has to be very patient, just like a painter. Then Julie realised, you are Claude Monet, she gasped. Yes, laughed the old man. I am Claude Monet. Together, they searched for Louis along the shady path deeper and deeper into the magical garden until it seemed as if they had left the real world behind. Under a willow, Julie saw Monet's umbrella like a huge white mushroom and there was Louis. He had a blue nose, a purple ear and one green paw. Naughty dog, shouted Julie. You've walked all over Mr. Monet's paintings. I think your dog wants to be a painter, laughed Monet. Look, he's made a picture too. Then Julie saw Monet's painting laid out in the sun to dry. Clouds floating on a mirror pond, a field of golden haystacks, a row of wispy poplars and a little Japanese bridge. The brush marks glowed like flowers in a garden. They turned the handle on a rickety gate and stepped inside. It was like a garden inside a garden, a wild, wet, watery garden where willows bowed over a silent pool. Together, they crossed the green bridge. Ooh. Ooh, this one's a bit big. Ooh. When they rowed across the pond, it felt like floating in one of Mr. Monet's paintings. Julie heard the splash of the oars and birds calling in the trees. All around them, lilies sparkled like a midnight sky. When they reached the very middle of the pool, Monet stretched into the dark water and pulled out one flower the biggest lily of all, as bright as a silver star. A little present from my water garden, he said. They walked back towards the house and Monet pushed open a huge studio door. Here is my biggest idea of all, he said proudly. I'm trying to paint the most enormous water garden in the world. When you stand in the middle, you'll feel as if you have dived into a pool. It will be amazing, said Julie. For a moment, Monet looked sad, but to tell you the truth, 
I wonder if I'll ever finish it, he said. I'm old now and my eyesight is bad. Julie thought for a moment. Hmm. You'll need to be very patient, she said, like a gardener. Yes, he smiled, just like a gardener. Then Claude Monet pulled out a big watch. Hmm, four o'clock precisely, he said. It's time for tea. Waiting in the yellow dining room, surrounded by pictures from Japan, sat Miss Monet and Julie's mother. Here are your little runaways, said Monet. Then it was time to leave. Monet walked with them as far as the river. Louis wanted to say goodbye too, but as he jumped up, Julie's beautiful lily went flying into the river. Oh, Louis, shouted Julie. That was a special lily. They took the train back to the city and even Louis was tired. The garden seemed like a distant dream. But in the middle of the night, Julie heard Louis whining to go outside. She tiptoed through the apartment and beneath the balcony, something was sparkling on the river. Julie ran outside and stretched into the dark water. She pulled out a lily, as bright as a silver star. Perhaps it's a little present from the water garden, she whispered. And as the city slept, she breathed in the sweet smell of the magical garden of Claude Monet. Yeah.